Today I'm making the scrappiest quilt you have ever seen. It is the scrap buster of all scrap busters. And it's really addictive to make. Once you start, you will not be able to stop. This quilt goes by many names, but most people call it potato chip. It's super easy and fun to make and I will be showing you two different variations. Let's go! I have told you in my last videos that I am at war with my scraps. It pretty much looks like a mountain by now. And since I'm the worst at organizing, my only way out of this is finding great scrappy projects. And the potato chip quilt is definitely one of them. These are the fabrics I've gotten from my scrap pile. And I will be splitting these into warm colors, cool colors and whites. Let's cut some 4.5 by 2.5 inch rectangles. I need to make a confession. I envy, really, really envy quilters that are organized. Because I'm not. I spend so much time watching YouTube videos on how to organize your scraps and sometimes I'll give it a try but I always end up with a bag full of scraps. So yeah, I struggle. I have no idea how many rectangles I've got here. They may be enough, they may be too many, too few. We'll only find out once we start to assemble. Big question time. How do we pick the fabrics that go well together? I could just put all of these in a bag and see what comes out. I usually love doing quilts this way, it's relaxing and a lot of fun. But I was looking for a bit more structure for this one. Nah, I don't like it. The second option is googling quilts and looking for quilts you like and seeing the color combinations they use. But my go-to solution here is always the color wheel. I look for complementary colors for contrast and analog colors to tone things down. Hey, if nature says some colors work together, who am I to say any different? The complementary colors make the best contrast between each other. So you have like the red with the green, you have the yellow with the purple, the blue with an orange, and then you have the analogous colors. So when you have the red, you have the pink and the dark orange. When you have like the blue, you have the greens and the purples. This is how we make our choices as far as fabrics go. I'm using my color wheel two ways. I want the soothing calm of using my warm analogous colors in each block, but then I'm going to combine it with the contrast of using the cools for my second kind of quilt block. It's awesome, I love it. <laughs> it's time to chain piece some pairs together and I am leaving some unevens out because we will need some singles for this whole pattern to work. No two same fabrics together and ideally we will want pairs that have a great contrast, you know, that work well together. But nothing too formal. This is probably the easiest, quickest, most relaxed quilt pattern out there so we want to enjoy the process. Have you noticed anything different about our setup today? How many times have you heard me complain that I needed a bigger desk? Well, the universe provided. Scratch that, FlexiSpot provided. They are the sponsor for this video. This is an awesome standing desk, which means you can adjust the height of the desk and that is such an incredible option to have. This is the desk, I didn't even know I needed it, but now that I have it, I cannot imagine having anything else. This was easy enough to assemble, as long as you get a helping hand from someone else. They provide all the tools and the pieces you need. This desk is great for your posture and for reducing stress on your body, but I also find it awesome for thinking too. <laughs> I get my best ideas, you know, standing up. It just flows a lot better. And now that I actually can, I've realized I actually paint better standing up too. So this is perfect for a lot of different things. You can even get your cardio on as you're working. You know, if you add a treadmill to your working, station. I have to say I was a little bit worried about how wobbly this desk would be, you know, when it is at its highest, you know, the machine is quite heavy, I am leaning on it as I'm cutting fabric, you know, pushing into it, and I wondered how the desk would handle all of that. It's supposed to stand over 350 pounds. Let's test it. So I raise it when I need to cut fabric because it's so much easier for me to cut standing up and it actually improves the cutting as well. And then I just lower it, you know, and I'm ready to sew. Let's just say my back is very, very happy with this change to my routine. I used to get so uncomfortable after working at my desk for a couple of hours. I was always so stiff. And now I just stand when I need to and that's that. FlexiSpot provides all kinds of standing desks depending on what you need. If you want a premium standing desk for daily use, you can check out their E7 and E7 Pro. If you're on a limited budget, you can choose the E5 model. And you can unlock more savings by clicking on the promo code I'll be leaving in the description. Just click on the Flex spot link and enjoy all their discounts <laughs> it's a party a scrappy party <laughs> look at that <laughs>
let's make our first potato chip variant and this is the original one I think all we need to get started is two rectangles and sew them together if we've done our job right this should be a 4.5 by 4.5 square let's see perfect let's get started now we want to add one rectangle on the top and on the bottom and again if we did our math right they should match the edges of the square exactly. I was doing the original version, okay? The original potato chip. That's not what we want. We want to add a white frame. So let's... So we need two whites instead of color. Let's sew again. One and two. And now we press. <laughs> and now we add two. And look at that, guys. Our math is paying off once again. It's perfect. Let's sew again this is what we have so far now comes a colored frame okay and this is why i love this one so much better than the original version it's not too much color you can definitely see the different layers and for me that's even better and as you can see this is going to be a really big block that's why you don't need many of them let's keep going we didn't do it here okay because if we did it would be exactly the same we want to mismatch our seams so we put it on top and bottom first now, as you can see, this isn't going to cut it. We need a little bit bigger. And that's where our singles come in. We're going to add a third strip to two of our pairs, and that's what we're going to sew. And essentially, this is it, and we just keep going and adding layers until we're done with it. Clearly, this is not going to be the demise of my scrap pile, okay? There's more than enough here that I could make a quilt so big it would cover the entire room. A quick tip here though, if your rectangles aren't exactly alike, and odds are, you know, they won't be, mine certainly aren't, when you're sewing, just compensate a little bit. Do you see here how this one is bigger than the other? I get this every time, and it's okay. We just line up our smaller rectangle with the outer edge of the larger rectangle, and we just compensate for the seam. Now, if the difference is too big and you can't do it this way, just place the smaller rectangle in the middle of the larger one and compensate on both sides. And that's it, problem solved. Let me show you our first variant. Look how cute this is. All you need to do is to press them. You don't need to trim them. You don't need to nest seams. This is it. It's looking gorgeous. Let's move on to number two. Okay, for our second quilt block, we need a white center. And then we add color rectangles, exactly how we did the first time, but now it's color instead of white. And for this one, we want cool colors. Let's add one to the top, one to the bottom real quick, and then two to the sides. And look at that, it's looking cute already. And here we go. <laughs> Can I just say, guys, that this project made me as nervous as it excited me? I mean, I know my sewing can be a little bit wonky at times, and it's something I've accepted about myself. I've been this way all my life. I mean, I cannot make two things alike no matter what they are, even recipes. <laughs> I'm okay with that, but I do know that it doesn't work sometimes, not when you're doing fussy quilt blocks. And while this one isn't fussy at all, it does require some evenness, let's call it that. So yeah, yeah, I was nervous and I'm still nervous even though it is looking pretty great so far. And if you're like me and your sewing ends up a little bit wonky, don't stop doing it on that account, okay? Keep doing it, keep making wonky stuff. Odds are it will look so much better than you imagine once you're done and you will have a lot of fun doing it. Turning trash into treasure is my new favorite thing to do. <laughs> look at what tiny little scraps of fabric can make and look how just doing the layers differently makes two completely different blocks. Ah, this is magic, I love sewing. This is gorgeous. And look at that, guys. Look how wonderful this looks when it all comes together. Ah, oh, how awesome is this? 